welcome. You're watching a special program, or rather, an exclusive interview with the incumbent Minister of Elections, who is also the Minister of Police and Prisons, the Honorable Fawalu Ifau Harry Shusta. Well, thank you for allowing us to uh, conduct this interview or allowing time because it's rather a delicate issue. Uh, as people are aware, uh, recently Parliament recently amended and passed new amendments to the Electoral Act concerning the registration voters. There's been a little bit of confusion here and there, and we thought this would be a great opportunity for a clarification. The amendments have been passed. What does it mean? Uh, is everybody going through the new system now? Uh, online, registration, the whole works? Um, thank you, Taufinga, for the question. It's a very important question. The, the whole reason why we are going through the process free registering um, all our eligible voters arises from the fact that the electronic system that we currently use to store the information is outdated and it cannot uh, facilitate the storage of information going forward. And so we've, we've bought a new system and we, we need to take photos and the 10 digits of fingers for everyone again because of this uh, technical uh, deficiency in the, in, the, um, in the old system. But that, that's the reason that has generated the requirement for all eligible registered voters to be uh, uh, registered again. But one of the, the added benefits of the new amendments is the extension of the uh, system whereby uh, online registration from overseas can be facilitated. Online registration was uh, in the law before, but it was limited to our uh, students who were studying overseas and to our diplomatic workers and uh, government workers who were posted in our overseas offices. But now we've extended uh, the benefit of, uh, of that to all our other eligible vote voters who are overseas. So they can apply online from overseas, but they still have to come to the country to take their photo, the photo, to complete the taking of their, their photo and bio printing the yeah. photos. Yeah. So that's that's the other the other uh, part of it, and you have they all have to come here to to complete that part of the process, and after completing that, you are then placed on the on the electoral. The electoral. So even if you were on the roll from the last general elections, you mm -hmm. still have to sort of renew. Yes, you have to verify all your details and have your photo and your, your digits, finger finger digits take, retaken again so that it can be stored in the, in the new the system. system. We, we cannot uh, transfer the details from the old system into the new, new system. They're not compatible. So that's the reason what that's the reason that has uh, generated the requirement to have all the eligible voters to be re-registered again. Okay. One of the popular issues that also surfaced during the recent parliament debate on this new amendment was the eligibility of mm -hmm. Samoan citizens residing overseas but wish to run as candidates for general elections. Mm -hmm. Has there been any indication of Amendments to this um, part of the Electoral Act? Thank you, Tafinga. It's a, it's a very important question. Now, uh, the, our government have not seen it fit to alter the eligibility grounds for running as a candidate. The, the grounds for the criteria for eligibility has been laid out in the past and it's, it's, it's uh, well established. And it, it, it could be disadvantageous to to anyone wants to run if we suddenly do changes to those uh, right now. The eligibility criteria remain the same. You need to be a Samoan citizen, you're 21, um, you you have uh, resided in, you're a Matai, uh, you hold a registered Matai title, and you're also a, a registered voter 
of an electorate in 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 the country, uh, one of the fifty one electorates, and then additionally you need to have resided here for three years, and uh, rendered service to your village council or your church yes, for, three and years. for three years as well. So right. those those criteria will not change; they remain the same. And those were the criteria for the last uh, election, or be the same for the one the election in 2026. Okay. Well, on this, uh, the uh, issues that you wish to inform mm -hmm. our voters on any changes mm -hmm. that, and also for mm -hmm. assistance in preparing for mm -hmm. the next general elections in 2026. I I urge and I request um, all our eligible voters to to register yourself. It's very important in this election cycle that you uh, register yourself. And we, we seek the assistance of the uh, village council, the churches and all the committees in each village and, a, and each uh, electoral district to have all our eligible voters uh, vote. It's a very important uh, uh, right that you have, the right to cast your vote and choose your, choose your leaders. But you must be registered in order to exercise that right. And it's very important for you to get registered because now we are enforcing the the current current uh, law that you must uh, you must register and vote where you reside unless you are um, a Matai. If you are a Matai from another area different from where you reside, then you have a choice. But every other every other person, if you have resided in an area for six at least six months. Then when when you register, you must be registered to vote where you you have resided for at least six months, and that's not only important for your for for exercising your your right to choose who you want to be your leader, but it's also very important for allocation of resources. Uh, for instance, we now have the the one million tala uh, assistance for for electoral districts. Well, you're, you're eligible because you vote in that, that district. Yeah, district. And also uh, things like your power needs, your water needs, well, the right. schools, hospitals. Public well, services. Public, it, it's public services provided to your, to your area. It's very important that, uh, that you vote in where you live in because the person you vote for is the person responsible to, vote, make, to make sure that those services are provided to you. It's very difficult for you to go to ask for your water and your power at your home when you vote somewhere else, unless you're a Matai, but if you're not a Matai and you vote somewhere else than where you live, it's very difficult for you to go see the, the member of parliament ask for well, assistance, it's, it's, and then you, are, you don't reside there. So it's, that's one of the reasons why it's important that you register, you register where you reside and vote where you reside. Well, again, thank you, Honorable Minister, for uh, allowing us this opportunity, and that's our program. For now, as we wait.